So I'm going to do a quick video. I know I never do quick videos, uh, but um, our friend David Hildago from um, Los Lobos asked me about this guitar. So I'm going to do this for David and that'll be about a minute and then we'll go on to other things. But David, this guitar you were asking about is a really clean 65 and um, there's some things about 65 that you should all know. First off, 65 was a transitional year. 65, as I've said before, was a transitional year for Fender, because CBS bought them. It was a transitional year for Martin, because of the new factory. And it was a transitional year for Gibson, because Ted McCarty, who had run Gibson, invented the 330, invented the 335, invented the Les Paul, invented the Flying V, invented the Explorer, and led the company to fame and fortune, Ted McCarty, who also went on to work with Paul Reed Smith, Ted McCarty left the company. So what happened in 65 at Gibson? Big deal. Three things. One, the headstock pitch. In 1965, the headstock pitch went forward. Why? So to help it less stress back here so it wouldn't break back there. So, okay? So in 1965, mid-year, they pulled this forward. In 1965, they made the neck smaller. Up to this point, ne smaller necks were on the 345s and 355s, the L5s. The expensive guitars from Gibson had a slightly smaller neck. It was more hand-carved. That was the thinking. So they decided to add this new feature, the slim, fast neck, to all the guitars. It happened in mid-65. Three things. Parts went from nickel, plating to chrome plating. Chrome stood up better. Chrome was the new thing. It was more durable. Nickel has a little more grace to it. Nickel has a little more glow to it. So those are the three things. In 65, they didn't change them all at once. Early 65s generally have big necks, headstock pitch, nickel hardware. A lot of people will just call that a 64. Mid-65 is when those th items changed, and in mid-65 you can find nickel parts, small neck, headstock pitch, big neck. There's a mix of things you'll see, but three items happened in 1965. Just like Fender, 1965 happened with, they went from nickel to chrome, they went to a smaller neck, and all the necks got smaller after that and then this headstock pitch. Now, if your headstock is pitched back a little more, it provides a little more reflection from the string that vibrates back and forth. Okay, David, this is a 1965 330. It doesn't have a big neck, but it's not the real small neck like you see in 66s. It's all straight, the Bigsby straight. Um, the guitar is really pretty, and we don't have a lot of light here, but there's some flame in the guitar. It's got good geometry. It's a really great sounding guitar. Brazilian rosewood fingerboard until 1968. Remember? Eh, it's all this stuff you got to remember. Clusan tuners. These are nickel. And then um, there's a little bit of dark shading on the back of the headstock on this. Uh, I I'm pretty sure this is all factory on that. Occasionally they will do that. They'll put a black dart on the back, but uh, we see no break back there. Just a little discoloration. Original Bigsby. Bridge pickup. A little bit out of phase with both pickups. Great guitar, really great guitar. Slightly smaller neck than you'd find on, say, something like this, which is a 1965 Gibson. Now, we were just talking about 65. This is a 335. You guys all know this. 330s with their single coils are hollow. 335s have a center block running through them so they don't feed back. That was much more expensive to build. Also, they put the more expensive pickups on, humbucking pickups, which of course buck the hum. This guitar will have a little more juice, a little more energy. You buy this because it's woody, 
and kind of airy sounding, more like an acoustic, you buy this because you really want something with a little more sustain and power. So this is a straight ES-335, 1965. The most important feature on this guitar is its big neck. It is a big neck, really a great guitar, big fat neck, nice patent sticker pickups, an original sunburst finish, a nice color too without any fade. These are either kind of tobacco-y or they get a little lighter on this. We, we you know, here's a lighter that's more of an Epiphone burst. And this is that dark kind of 50s burst with that big neck. The tuners have been changed, which is good because you're going to save a couple of thousand dollars with the tuners on this having been changed. We've had this in for a while. It's a great guitar. Nickel bridge, chrome tailpiece, factory original. See what I mean? Chrome pickups. But the important thing everybody wants is that big neck. And then we'll look at the headstock pitch here and you can see they're about the same. Both of these are 65s. All right, so what else do you got in thin lines, Willie? Well, huh, what are you kidding? This is also a 65. I'm sensing a theme. This is... Wow, do you hear that? Some of that is a mass of the headstock. Some of that is just this guitar happens to be louder. And this is a completely straight Trini Lopez. Now, Trini Lopez usually has a little wooden plaque there that says Trini Lopez, so you know the model, in case you didn't recognize the diamond-shaped F-holes that match the diamond-shaped inlays, and then, of course, the kind of diamond-shaped Firebird headstock. There is a artistic something to this. It really has a, be it's a beautiful guitar. These things have a lot of charm. Uh, and this is basically a 335 that Trini Lopez, who was a movie star, and a big star, huge star. He did uh, The Dirty Dozen. Uh, his song was uh, Yellow Tree, Oh So Pretty. Da, 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 da. Ah, ask your mom. So. <laughs> Trini Lopez. These are really cool guitars. If anything's gonna go up in the future, considering where Firebirds are and stuff, it might be this. And then, for those of you who like tuning guitars, there is this 1965-335-12. These are famously good 12-string guitars. The patent sticker pickups from this era have a nice bright mid-range that all of these humbucking guitars from this era right up through the early 70s have that nice bright upper mid-range. It's full yet articulate and that's why these are really cool guitars. This has a little slimmer neck on it but this is a nice color, good cherry red, all straight, original pickguard, original bridge, no brakes, nickel clusons. Hey, yeah, cool guitar. All right, one last guitar. This is, of course, an Epiphone. Back when Epiphone was made inside the factory, and for any of you Beatle fans, you know this is a casino. All three Beatles that played guitar played an Epiphone casino. Paul bought one first. By their last tour, the three of them had it. Why did they like it? Well, they liked it because they, it was a hollow body instrument. Again, with the P90s, it's hollow body, so you can play it sitting in the bus. We can all hear each other. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that one again, right? So all three of them had these, and then they got off the bus, and they plugged them in and turned them on, and You know the gig. So these are. This is an Epiphone Casino. A nice, clean example. We got it with different tuners. The holes were not enlarged on this, so we found a set of tuners. And finding tuners with chrome buttons is hard to do. Sure, you can find these tuners with the white buttons on this 330, 
but finding tuners that are exacting for this, that's hard. The Epiphone was a counterpart to all the Gibsons. So one guy down the street would sell Epiphone and the other guy would sell Gibson. They're selling the same guitar but with different brand names on them, kind of like Ford had with its Mercury division. Same car, different clothes. Get it? So the Epiphones were something all three Beatles used. Guys still insist that these sound different. They don't. But that's all right, sure, we get it. It's got a great look, and especially this is a classic Epiphone finish. Unique to that, a little less ch -ch on the spray gun, and you got yourself an iced tea burst. Okay, there you go, that's all for now. That's kind of our ES story, and I'll point out our little Vox student amp that I'm gonna dime. <laughs>